every time we come and see you, there's always got to be an emphasis on what kind of value the pilot is getting for his power plant dollar. But they're always looking for a little bit more power plant and a little bit less dollar. Yeah. Tell us about what's new at Viking. Our customers have asked us for more Honda. We base our engine on Honda. It's hard for a designer to say that, well, we don't want to design as much, but handing it over to Honda is a good thing. <laughs> so what we did is we designed a taller gearbox, and by doing so, we were able to keep the engine upright the way it is in the car. The advantage with that is every time Honda comes out with a new engine, we're able to take the latest technology and very quickly implement it into the aviation world. So what we've done now is, which nobody else has done, is using gasoline direct injection, or GDI for short, which is similar to a diesel engine, except it's using gasoline and it's being injected directly into the cylinder. Our design philosophy has changed so that when we make the parts for our engine, they adapt to the engine rather than adapting the engine to our parts. And the main thing, what I'm talking about there, is the gearbox. The gearbox is now taller, and by having an idler gear in the gearbox, we're able to make a taller gearbox, bringing the propeller up. Bringing the propeller up allows us to use an upright inline engine, which is what an awful lot of the new car engines are. You've been able to put hundreds of these engines out into circulation now. What are you learning in the process, and what is the development cycle like? Well, it's always my ass in the airplane, you know, so whenever something needs to be tested, I go up and I test it. And uh, off-field landings was often and not far between years and years ago. They never happen anymore, you know, like you said, the expertise. Also have to give a lot of uh, credit to the auto manufacturers and to the environmental protection, you know, because we have very lightweight, super efficient car engines. The engines are extremely reliable because Consumer Reports reports on car engines. You know, if they have all kinds of failures, nobody's going to want to buy the car. They're a lot more suitable to be used as an airplane engine. I would say years ago, Van Grunsman was correct. You know, they, they were heavier, they, were, they had cast cranks, and they were not as adaptable to airplanes. That's all changed. In fact, you know, you look at most traditional engines uh, for aircraft, they are, they are the ones that are a little bit behind the curve now. They don't have gasoline direction injection. They don't have an uh, inline, very compact, liquid-cooled cylinder head. Uh, automotive uh, and also motorcycles have gone away from individual cylinders and air cooling and carburetors years ago. Um, and we see it now that this neck, this last step, and I was even a little bit kind of hesitant about implementing gasoline direct injection, variable valve timing, variable valve lift, until I actually used it. And now people tell me, why do we need to change the variable, the lift of the intake cam in an airplane. And that comes from not understanding that when you're at 4,800 RPM, the engine is super efficient at 4,800 RPM without lifting the intake valve so much. When you're taking off at 5,400 RPM, it's like turning on a whole nother engine. When you lift that intake cam using the Honda built-in variable lift mechanism, it's like turning on a turbocharger and it makes a big difference in aviation. For folks interested in the latest and greatest in 130 horsepower, what's it going to take to get into this engine? How can you adapt this to the many airframes that this engine might be suitable to? And oh yeah, how much is it going to cost? So it's $12,000 and that gives the customer a running engine with exhaust and the computer to run it and aviation quality wire loom and a gearbox and all the stuff that they would need. We have gone away from selling firewall forward packages uh, for two reasons. One, the marketing aspects of it. You know, we have comp competitors that will take our engine and firewall forward and add them together and compare that to their engine price. So we, we don't do that anymore. We sell an engine for 11.9, and then what we do is we sell a la carte. Somebody wants an engine mount for their airplane, it's $1,000. They want a cowling for their airplane, it's $1,000. And those are the only big items. Anything else, like you want a radiator or a silicone elbow or a hose clamp, those you can buy on our shopping cart. You don't have to put all that money up front. This engine, like all of our other previous engines, will be adapted to all popular kit planes. And we also do some one-offs, but very seldom. Zenith, of course, has been an excellent customer of ours. So we do an awful lot of Zeniths, but we do everything else. We do the RB12, we do the S19, S20, we, we do all of them. When will this engine be available? It's available. Yeah, that's another thing that's changed at Viking. There's no putting money down and then waiting four months. You just order an engine and we send it to you.
Are you still going to be continuing with uh, previous power plants? Yeah, the 110 we're doing, and most important, we are moving forward, but we are always stocking parts for everything that we've built. And in addition to that, anything that's being changed on any engine is always being done with the thought that it will be retrofittable back to previous designs. Thank you, sir. Much appreciate your time. Yep. Thank you. Aero TV is brought to you by since 2001, MGL Avionics has produced avionics for experimental and light sport aircraft. The flagship product is the IEFIS, a comprehensive next-generation flight, engine, and navigation instrument designed to meet the demands of the modern pilot. See more at www.mglavionics.com. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com.